What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Tika vlog. I believe this is now part eight. And if you are new to the series and you haven't watched any of the videos before this, I highly recommend going all the way back to vlog part one so you can understand what the series is about. And if you are a returning viewer, welcome back and thanks for joining me on this journey of, uh, in a journey that I've enjoyed doing for you guys uh, because again, I've had fun uh, doing it as well. So welcome back guys. This is a obviously a newer rifle with a Tika action, uh, completely different than the original Tika for the first seven that uh, I originally filmed. Actually, it's right here, naked. Um, I'm letting my buddy who also just got a Tika uh, borrow the uh, chassis, which is the x-ray that it was sitting in. And you know, I just wanted him to get a feel for that uh, chassis so he can decide whether he wants to uh, go the chassis route or potentially a stock route. We'll get into that here in a second. So here's that original uh, Tika, um, just kind of naked. So now before you guys crucify me in the comments, I know you guys are gonna talk about, well, it's not even a Tika action anymore. It's not even a, a original Tika. In theory, it's still the receiver or the action, right? But it's now, uh, I would say a full custom build in, in, in a sense. And the point of the series was for a shooter that has very, zero or just zero experience getting in a long range to find a platform that uh, they could grow with it based off of their goals of becoming a long range shooter, whether they, they want to be a long range hunter, uh, maybe just a, uh, they just love long range shooting and want to be an enthusiast, or maybe they want to become a national level competitor, who knows? But the idea was to be able to take a rifle off the shelf that has good aftermarket support and what I mean by aftermarket support is such as like uh, triggers, uh, stocks or chassis, um, scope bases, whatever the case might be for that shooter to potentially upgrade as they start to figure out their shooting style and again, their overall goal for long range shooting. And for me, that was the Tika platform based off of my experience, based off of the different actions and uh, factory rifles that I see go through all my in-person classes. So I'll just leave it at that. But I originally wanted to do this last week down at Alta Shooting Solutions for our in-person class out down there. But between teaching a class, uh, you know, holding on to a camera and then doing a vlog, it was just a little too much. So I decided just to wait to get back to Cody inside the studio to uh, do this vlog. But I'll throw some B-roll over how it performed down at Alta Shooting Solutions. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and roll into this rifle and kind of the why behind it. So uh, the very first thing I'll talk about, it is chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. Now you guys are going to ask, well, why 6.5 Creedmoor over, let's say, like a 6 millimeter Creedmoor or one of those 6 uh, millimeter variants, such like a Dasher or a BR or a GT that a lot of competitive shooters are using right now. Now, this rifle, I wanted a dual purpose as not only a potential competition rifle, but a training rifle that I can take to my in-person classes. So with that, factory ammo availability is important to me. Uh, because sometimes I don't have time to reload potentially three to 400 rounds right before a class on top of possibly re reloading for a competition and then barrel life. I've taken a few 6.5 Creedmoor barrels, just a little over 3,500 rounds uh, without having you know a loss of velocity or loss of accuracy. So if I went with like a six millimeter Creedmoor or something uh, of that nature, I would have you know issues with barrel life, having to you know swap barrels after probably three or four classes. So again, I went with the 6.5 Creedmoor because I've got a ton of brass, and if I just wanted to work up a real quick load, in the case I do want to uh, load for it for a class or for a competition, uh, there's a bunch of recipes out there for the 6.5 uh, Creedmoor. So that is why I went with that. Route. And I like the recoil, especially compared to like a six BR or my six millimeter Creedmoor. It just helps me stay in touch with my fundamentals. So let's talk about the rifle build from buttstock to muzzle brake. Now uh, it's sitting in my uh, favorite KRG Whiskey 3 with the enclosed forend. I've been running this setup probably four years now, and I've got a little bit of uh, different modifications to it uh, from uh, my previous or in, in previous uh, KRG Whiskey 3s that I run, specifically the heavy angled bag rider, I typically just run the standard butt hook that it comes with, but I'm trying out the extra weight in the back for you know um, weight and to help balance out the heavier barrel. And I've got my standard um, heavy spacer in the rear, over molded cheek piece. I've got the Sturk uh, sweat bolt throw, big fan of this bolt throw. It's the same one that is on my original Tika with the gold knob. Um, and I just had him paint it red for me. Super, I mean, it stands out. Pretty cool looking. 
It's got a Area 419 20 MOA uh, scope base on it, and it is topped with a Collis K525i right side windage, and inside is the AMR reticle. Now, I'm not gonna dive too deep into the weeds of the AMR reticle or my thoughts about it, uh, but it's, uh, it's a nice reticle. I'm just getting used to it, especially coming from the Skimmer 3 and Skimmer 4 that I'm typically running. I've got two Flatline Ops Halo Xs on top to help with my anti-cant and it is sitting in a Spur 4001 mount. Uh, moving on to the barrel, this barrel is a 26 inch uh, car... <laughs> How was messed that up? So this barrel is a 26 inch proof competition contour barrel with a seven and a half twist. And this rifle is chambered by my guys over there at uh, Short Action Customs. So I, again, the idea was, hey, if a shooter was able to uh, burn out that original factory barrel, hey, he's got uh, pre-fit options, which is what this um, a rifle is, is a pre-fit, or they can send it to a gunsmith uh, that they trust or you know that has really good reviews to chamber it up from. Uh, to really have, again, that accuracy that they want. Not saying that prefits don't have that accuracy, but again, if you wanna go with a Wildcat cartridge, obviously you would be sending that to uh, a gunsmith to get it um, chambered up. So, uh, Short Action Customs have been shooting their guns for now since 2016, and they do a phenomenal job. One of the best gunsmiths uh, in the nation. I've got an Area 419 Sidewinder muzzle brake. Now, the bipods, the bipods are bipods, but right now, Typically with this gun, I have it paired up with these Harris bipods and it's got the really right stuff. Um, Harris bipod adapter that can quickly adjust the bipod legs along the enclosed foreign on the arc rail. Uh, and so that's pretty neat. And it's got hot kill uh, feet on it. But, you know, depending on the location I'm at, I'll switch out these bipods through the Thunder Beast that I have, Atlas's or, or even Sky Pods. But that is what just typically lives on this rifle. So that is the rifle in a nutshell. And, uh, oh, uh, this is, has a folder on it. Uh, this rifle weighs just a touch over 20 pounds with the bipods, uh, which I believe is a pretty good weight. You know, I know the guys are going on to 20 to 23 uh, pounds, uh, you know, with additional weight uh, for that a little bit extra stability and uh, recoil control. But uh, again, I just wanted this to be, you know, kind of a hybrid of my training rifle and um, a competition, uh, competition rifle. So you know, if I ever want to take this to a national level event, two-day national level event, or take it just to a local comp, I can. That's that. So uh, a part of the Tika vlog that I actually wanted to shoot down at Altus was a couple things. And I'm going to show the video here in a second, but um, traveling from Cody down to sea level, which Cody's sitting at 5,000 feet. So I zeroed here and then went down to uh, sea level. And a common question that I got is like, do I have to worry about checking my zero um, if I'm going from sea level to 5,000 or 5,000 is sea level, whatever the case might be. And so um, I'll just play the video so you guys can kind of see for yourself. So this is all Kalen stuff. Kalen uh, shot first, my first two rounds, and I got this on video. I just didn't like the camera angle that I got on it. My first two rounds, aiming at the top of the triangle was this here. So as you can see, there was zero point of aim, point of impact shift going from, and this thing took three flights. My rifle took three flights from Cody to Denver, Denver to Houston, Houston to Pensacola, right? And I've got no point of aim, point of impact shift. But because I didn't like that camera angle, I set up again and shot three more shots down here. So I only really shot five. I really only shot five shots on day one because I was busy doing camera stuff and you know teaching and whatnot. And um, this is not my best group. I think it measures out to be about a, a half MOA, right? But I'm okay with that, all right? I'm okay with the fact that, you know, I wasn't trying to shoot the best group. I was just trying to group the rifle and see if there was a point of aim, point of impact shift from going from 5,000 feet to sea level. Based off of this information, there's not. So as you guys can see, no point of aim, point of impact shift from the 
time that I came, went from Cody to Florida. Now, a lot has to do with obviously the uh, high quality components that I do have, but uh, it's always good to check your zero, uh, any chance that you get, if you have the ability to, right, to just make sure um, that your in inner demons uh, are, are, are good. But now that I've seen that, I have the utmost confidence that if I take this somewhere else and I'll have the ability to zero, um, I should be able to effectively engage targets at distance with this rifle setup. So now I've been shooting this for a little over a year now. I've had it for quite some time, but I've just wanted to really focus on that original build. So let's talk about how this rifle shoots. Now with hand loads, I've been able to get this thing down to about 0 0.2, 0 0.3 with uh, 147 uh, Hornady ELDMs. I mean, this thing shoots pretty tight. And even the 0 0.2, 0 0.3s with Hornady factory ammo, uh, 140 grain ELDMs. I know that group that I showed you guys wasn't too impressive. Uh, it was about a half MOA, uh, but you know I can get this thing tuned in uh, pretty damn, um, pretty damn good. So with that, uh, not only group size, but I've got probably about 1,300 rounds down this rifle right now, and uh, I'll talk about my most recent shooting experience with it down at Alta Shooting Solutions. So we hosted a uh, intro to long range course as well as at advanced competition uh, clinic down at Altus. And uh, over the course of the intro to uh, precision, I'm doing demonstration, whether it be trajectory validation at distance, uh, 21 dot drill, which is a, uh, a murderous drill at 100 yards, you know, just other uh, demonstrations in regards to body positioning and, you know, maybe making wind calls. And I mean, this, rifle hit everything that I was aiming at as long as I gave it a good trigger press and gave it a good wind call. On the last day of our advanced competition course, we ran a small little uh, mini match for the uh, students that were there and the instructors, so myself and my partner, Kalen, ran through it with them. And uh, I was actually really happy with the performance of this thing. Again, every uh, bad miss or every miss was based off of my error whether it be a bad trigger press or bad wind call. I wouldn't say it keeps up with, you know, six millimeter cartridges, but again, if you are just getting into the sport of long range and just competing, and you start out with a 6.5 Creedmoor, you have a bunch of brass, why not rechamber it in a 6.5 Creedmoor and take it out to a competition and you can still, again, be very effective. There's a lot of top level national competitors out there that are winning matches with the 6.5 Creedmoor cartridge. I know you got a little bit more recoil than some of those running sixes, but as long as you drive the rifle correctly, it will uh, do well for you. So that's pretty much the rifle and hopefully the vlog in a nutshell. And just so that you guys can see, let's go ahead and throw some footage of me shooting it in that one day mat over a couple stages with the trigger cam attached and see uh, how well it does. So this stage here is the first stage of the day. It was a legendary uh, rock stage at Altus that I always see pictures of and the course of fire is a 12 round course of fire and for just the you know, match, we gave it 100 second part times versus nine. And it was, uh, shooter chose to engage it in any order and they have to engage a 50% of a sick at 735 yards, I believe, uh, with two rounds and then move to a closer target at 350 yards with one round. Uh, so for again, a total of 12 rounds. I guess you got it. I drop three. Two. Well, you drop one and uh, you time it. 
timed out for the last one. So yeah. 10? So 10, yeah. 10 out of dose. The 12 is right. Now let's go ahead and uh, show a troop line um, from 400 yards all the way out to 840 yards. Again, I can't complain with those results, but uh, again, before I wrap up this video, one thing I did want to talk about was the magazine. Now, um, I run, uh, typically I run the Accurate Mag uh, AICS style magazines with the binder plate inside, but however, I've noticed that my Tikas feed a lot better with the Accurate Mags without the binder plate. And I'll give a close up for you guys here. But essentially what that is, is a binder plate, essentially limits the access of running longer bullets. Magazine without the binder plate feeds a little bit more reliably inside the TK actions versus the one with. So, all right guys, that pretty much sums up the uh, TK vlog part eight. Uh, I truly enjoy shooting this one. And um, you know, depending on where you guys are at in your journey of long range, hopefully uh, this is a potential route that you guys could possibly go. Um, there's a bunch of amazing gunsmiths out there. Just make sure you vet them um, and uh, talk to them and figure, you know, let them know your goals in regards to long range shooting and I'm sure they will uh, definitely take care of you. So uh, with that, thanks for watching guys. Uh, if you liked this video, if you liked the series, like, share, subscribe, and you guys know the drill. Keep your face on the gun. See you next time.